Good afternoon, welcome back. As you can tell by the title of the video, this is a set review. And you know by now we are going to be looking at 1996 Racer's Choice. This was a set put out by Pinnacle. And it was, they were black border cards, which I'm not a very big fan of. Because they're easily chipped. I mean, you can see these are far from mint condition. But it's still... Um, a nice set. These would be great for TTMs or in-person autographs as they do have a slight gloss to them, but they would probably sign rather well. 110 card base set. There are parallels and other inserts. We won't get into that. This was kind of a lower in product. This would probably be... Um, well, today's product you don't have a lot to compare it to, but back in the day... If, if this was a press pass product, this would kind of be like trackside, maybe somewhere in that level. So, this is card one, Rick Mast. I'm just do doing this to show you the fronts and the back of the card. I love it because obviously it has the stat line, a little paragraph, and a picture of the driver. And there you see the pinnacle branding. So, we're going to go through these. Not quite rapid fire, but give you guys a chance to see each card. Oops. We skipped one already. So we got Rusty Wallace is next. So a lot of these pictures are going to be from the 1995 season. As they were, as they would normally be in any kind of 96 set. And you can definitely see the, the edges, the chipping effect from these black border cards. There's Ward Burton when he was driving the MBNA car for Bill Davis. Learned a long time ago, MBNA was an acronym but then it became the proper name of the company when it uh, stood for maryland banks national association then they were bought out by bank of america later on there's front row joe jeff gordon ted musgrave family channel car mikey michael waltrip johnny benson that would be his win in atlanta uh, his second career win, Bill Elliott, Bobby Labonte, Ricky Rudd, Dale Jarrett, Bobby Hamilton, Ken Schrader, and you see the alcohol sponsorship airbrushed out, Derek Cope driving for Bobby Allison's team at the time, Brett Bodine, DW, of course this was near the end of DW's run as a team owner, as his team would fold in the early part of 1998. There's John Andretti. Of course, we lost John in the early part of 2020. Jeremy Mayfield. Don't see many pictures of him with the RCA DSS uniform. So he only really ran that car in 95 and 96, and then uh, changed with John Andretti midway through 96. Ernie Irvin, when he was on his comeback tour, so to speak, Lake Speed. Looks like we got some car cards, so I'm going to rotate these. This is one of the uh, nicer renderings of Rusty's car that I liked. Kind of gave that black and gold a little splash. Famous number three. Iconic number four. There's Terry's Championship ride of 1996 with the Kellogg's car. And look, you see how the... Uh, well, at first, I didn't see that valence there. It just looked like it was pitted. I was going to say, look how pitted the front end is, but I just now seen that band. Mark Martin. Obviously a preseason photo there. Jimmy Spencer with the Smoke and Joe's car. They didn't hide any cigarette advertisement, advertisement there. Robert Yates. It's obviously another preseason picture. Ricky Rudd. During his own car. Always liked the gradient on this car. I thought that that color profile was really nice and worked really well. The MBNA car, I like this one better as a silver car with the black trim where the green is on this one. Very patriotic looking family channel car. DW always had good looking cars and he loved those chrome numbers. Bobby Labonte with the Interstate Batteries car. I apologize for this thing shaking, trying not to do anything. Michael Waltrip, and I'm sure this picture was taken in the 95 season, because that looks like Atlanta in the background. 
but this was probably taken in 95 as part of a 96 preview. And look how bare that car is without all the other associate sponsors on it. Just so weird. Dale Jarrett. I'm sorry. Ernie Irvin. Dale Jarrett drove the car in 95. That's what I was thinking. There's Johnny Benson's car for 96. Brett Bodine. First Lowe's Cup Series car. Not too bad of a paint job. Ricky Craven. A lot going on here. I did not like this paint job. I just thought there was, it was it was very uh, noisy. There was a lot going on, and it was very inconsistent the way that the black is laid out. There's an iconic paint scheme, Bobby Hamilton. Another nice paint scheme with Morgan Shepard, Joe Nemechek, Burger King, Bill Elliott, McDonald's. And then there's Jeremy Mayfield's car. Kind of a plain car, but it got the job done. Easy to spot. And John Andretti. Of course, he's got those numbers with the gradient. I, I don't know why I like the, the numbers and the paint schemes that have that. I just think it's a little flavor that, that a lot of people don't put the effort into these days. Now we'll go to the back half of the set. Jeff Gordon, obviously, after his fifth win at 95, looks like New Hampshire. 95 Cup champion Jeff Gordon. There's another celebration, 95 champion. Another celebration photo. Don't know who those folks are with him or what they're presenting. Looks like some drawings some kids made. We have Dale Earnhardt. That looks like that might be Don, Ho Don Hawk with him. I'm trying to zoom in and see the, the name on the badge, but I really can't see it. That might be Don Hawk. Dale Earnhardt, very nice picture there. Another one. So some really, really good photos here. Nothing recycled like Panini does today. Ted Musgrave had his own subset here of Hard Charger. He had a good year, 95, finishing 7th in points. He was top 5 most of the year. There's his crew chief, Howard Comstock. I'm sure that's Ted's daughter. Don't know her name. Some of you guys might be able to fill me in on that. There's Ted signing some autographs. Let's see if we can figure out some of the other autographs on that hat, or on the helmet. I see it looks like Ned Jarrett maybe right there. Robert Yates. Sterling Marlin. So lots of nice signatures on that helmet. Bobby Labonte. Bobby Labonte. Bobby after his first career win in the World 600. Bobby once again. Bobby once again. Sterling after his second Daytona win. Talladega win for Sterling. A couple nice shots here. Tony Glover. That'd be a good one to get signed by those two. Look at they got GM or they got Western Auto hats. I thought, I thought it said GM Goodrich. That'd been funny. Another nice Sterling Marlin hat. Now we got some uh, I believe these are just manufacturers. So we have Ford. There's going to be three here, Ford, Chevy, and Pontiac. There's Chevy, you see the templates going on. And then the Pontiac. Got some officials here, Elmo Langley. I'm sorry, Doyle Ford. Boy, I was off there. Doyle Ford was the flagman at the time. Jimmy Cox was the stop-and-go guy at the end of Pitt Road. There's Elmo Langley. Of course, Elmo passed away at the end of 96 over in Japan. Now we got some race winners here. It looks like Rusty at Richmond, Gordon at Dover, Earnhardt at Martins. Well, that's a nice picture. Martin at Wilkesboro, and Charlotte, Ward at Rockingham, and uh, that's Jeb Burton. His first appearance on a NASCAR card. I reached out to Jeb on Twitter with a picture of this card, asked if that's him, and he said absolutely that is him. So it'd be cool to get those two to sign that. Ricky Rudd. Atlanta winner Dale Earnhardt. Pole winners Gordon. Jarrett. Earnhardt. And I always like the pole because they'd have all the drivers and their times behind it, and they get the plaque and the photo, and it... It, it, it symbolized something, and it meant something. Now it's just, eh. So we got Martin, Bobby Labonte, Terry Labonte, 
Ricky Rudd, Kenny Schrader, Bill Elliott, Sterling Marlin. Johnny Andretti got his first career pull for the Southern 500 in 1995 at Darlington. Rick Mast. Can't remember where he got his 95 pull at. I think Dover, maybe. Because in 92, he got the pull for Atlanta and Petty's final race, and he got the pull in 94 at the Brickyard for the first race there. So he was always winning pulls at big events. I believe this was fall Dover of 95. Musgrave got his first pulls, and David Green got in the Bush class for having the most pulls in the Bush series in 1994, or 95, I'm sorry. Hut Strickland got his only career pole at the Fall Rockingham race, where Ward Burton got his first career win, and D.W. got his final career pole in the Fall race at Atlanta. Johnny Benson, the Bush Series champion. And this is weird. I, I think it, they got pictures from 95 and 94, because this was his second career win in Atlanta. So this is his first career win at Dover in the spring of 94. So it's weird that they put two different years on there. And there he is at the awards banquet. We've got a couple checklists. Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon. So anyway, that is the 96 Racers Choice 110 card set review. Haven't done a set review in a while. Been meaning to get these out there. Um, haven't been extremely busy. But I've been busy enough that I've just kind of put it off to the side. But I do have more sets that I've got finished up and plenty to review. So looking forward to putting more of those out here as I put the lid on the box. Hope you enjoyed this set review. Uh, takes me back a lot to uh, a lot of good memories of NASCAR back then. A lot of good card stuff back then. Because it wasn't all about buying packs and trying to find hits and trying to find one-on-ones and all this. It was about going out and, and building the sets and finding, you know... Like those cool cards that has Ward and Jeff on it, or, or Ward and Jeb on it, not Ward and Jeff. I did, matter of fact, I didn't even remember seeing any Jeff Burton cards in that set. So that kind of tells you how scattered these card companies were. But again, no recycled pictures. Panini, take note. Get some other photos in there. So anyway, thanks again for watching. Always uh, appreciate the support on the channel. So just keep hitting that like button. Keep hitting those uh, likes, subscribes, and commenting. It all helps. So thanks again, and uh, we'll see you, see you guys later.